Hey, what's good, everyone? It's Erwin. For those who were here last Saturday for Freedom Weekend, um, I'm just so glad so many of you guys pulled up. It was actually so sick just being able to worship with you guys again. Um, another evening, I'm just tuning to the Word and you know coming together um, as a church again. It's funny because registration for Freedom Weekend actually filled up so fast, and um, you know that's a great problem to have. That's the stuff you want to see. We want to pack this church. Um, as much as we can, getting as much people back in here um, in the most legal and socially distant way possible, of course. But I just hope that reminds you guys uh, that, you know, the church is here for you. We're all here for you. Um, and we're just so excited to, you know, slowly transition back to full in-person youth, full in-person, you know, Sunday services and just all that stuff. So today I have the honor um of wrapping up our series on the resurrection as we head into the Easter break. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had Gerald and we had Abby, and last week we had Pastor Buena speak on the exchange Barabbas over Jesus, how the crowd chose to set Barabbas free, who was a murderer, instead of Jesus, who willingly took the blame for our sin. So today, um, to wrap up the series, uh, we're going to take a look at the ascension of Jesus and the Holy Spirit coming down and how this ties into one of the last messages Jesus had to his disciples. Uh, I just love the whole story of the resurrection because you know this is really what our whole faith is based on. The fact that Jesus didn't just hang on the cross but he overcame death and paid the price for our sins, right? That um, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life as it says in John 3.36. So you know, let's get into it. If you guys have your Bibles, um, let's take a look at Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 3. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days um, and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. Um, for John baptized uh, with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And jumping to verse 8, But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Right, so what's happening is he here is, um, this is the moment as Jesus ascends to heaven. I love what it says in verse 8. Um, how it says that we will receive power from the Holy Spirit, that his physical absence would then mean his spiritual presence, that the Holy Spirit comes down and empowers us, right? Like believing in Jesus means you're not alone, but you have um, the Holy Spirit, you have the helper, you have the counselor, you have the spirit of truth living inside of you. Now, um, I just want to, want to rewind a bit because there's something really important that Jesus says before his ascension that I want to highlight. I don't know about you guys, but um, I love Hall of Fame speeches. Uh, for those who follow basketball um, or any sport, once an athlete retires, depending on how successful they were in their career, uh, they might be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Now, what intrigues me about these Hall of Fame speeches is that once a player's career is over, you get to hear their final thoughts and comments on everything they've done and accomplished. You get to hear... Um, their final remarks now after the resurrection of jesus and before he ascends to heaven uh, jesus meets his disciples in galilee where he has like a speech of his own if you guys are following we'll continue in matthew chapter 28 verse 16 and it's called the great commission um so what does what does commission even mean um it's funny because when, when I used to hear the word commission, I'd automatically think um, realtors or car salesmen, like how you know we'd hear that they're paid by commission. But commission can also mean a formal written warrant granting the power to perform various acts or duties, according to Google. And this definition will make more sense as we read the next couple of verses. So starting in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. 
Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always um, to the very end of age. Right? So youth, these are the words of Jesus. You know, this isn't just a wild guess of what he might have said, but these are the words of Jesus to the disciples. Um, And when you take a look exactly at who he was talking to, it was just the disciples. You know, Matthew was a tax collector. A lot of them were fishermen. Um, But the point is that he didn't send this message like to um, the holy people or whatever, but, or to the biggest influencers at that time. But he, he said these um, to ordinary people who believed, right? So this means like whatever stage or season of life you're in, whether that's middle school, high school, primary school, elementary school, university, or if you're done all that stuff, right? Believing in Jesus means we are equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit to go out and make his name known. And that he ascended to heaven so that his spirit can come down and dwell among us. And, you know, I get what you mean. Not not everyone is in a season, you know, to buy a plane ticket and book it 2,000 kilometers westward and end up in another country for a couple months. But one point I took from a sermon over the summer was that God strategically places you in your workplace. God strategically places you in the school that you go to. God strategically places you in that neighborhood that you live in, right? So I guess my challenge for us is uh, let's be actively spreading the good news of Jesus, spreading the love of Jesus to people we see on a daily, um, that Jesus loves each one of us so much that it doesn't matter how imperfect or messed up we are, but that um, Jesus died on the cross for each one of us and that there's salvation in his name and that Jesus paid the price um, for our sins because he loves each one of us, right? That we can have eternal life if we choose to put our faith in Christ. And as we approach Easter weekend, um, you know, let's just be extra attentive to what this weekend um, is really all about. You know, you know, the fact that Christ overcame death um, so that we can have the victory because of him. And I just hope you guys... Uh, we're encouraged by this in, in any way, and I'm just going to quickly end um, in prayer. Dear God, we just want to thank you for the cross. Um, we just want to thank you that you love us so much, that you gave your one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Lord, we praise you that we're not alone, and that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and we just pray that you continue to give us the courage, the power, and strength to go out and make your name known, whether that's um, opportunities through mission trips or going to another country or even just starting in our own um, local community. God, I pray that um, you just um, help us just spread the good news of Jesus and, and making your name known, God. Um, we love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen.